Hey again, it's Mr. Lum, and we're going to continue on uh, with some chapter 6 stuff in chemistry 11. And we're going to be talking about different types of chemical reactions. And you should probably, have probably recognize quite a few of these from uh, your science 10 class last year. Anyways, um, chemical reactions can be kind of classified and categorized in several different uh, types. Uh, the first type is synthesis, or what synthesis means is just essentially uh, making something, putting something together and making something new. So two things making one thing, or it can be three things making one thing, kind of thing like that. So the general formula for a synthesis reaction is just A plus B making C. And an example of this is I have magnesium plus oxygen gas, and if you remember from our last lesson, oxygen gas is diatomic, so it gets that two uh, subscript right there, and it's making one thing, mag magnesium oxide. So this is an example of two things turning into one thing right here. So uh, moving on, the next one is the exact, exact opposite of synthesis, and it is decomposition, or essentially it is one thing that breaks up into two things. So we have a AB kind of compound and it turns into A plus B. So an example of which is water decomposing into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Again, if we remember our diatomic elements, both hydrogen and oxygen are diatomic, so they get that two subscript right there, and water H2O. So, um, this takes a little bit of energy to do in real life, but this is a decomposition reaction of water. Okay, so again, one thing turning into two. The next one we have is a little bit more complex, is a single replacement, and it is an element replaces one part of a compound. So I have uh, a single replacement of a metal, and so A, is going to be a metal. Now, here is a compound, and so, sorry, A is just like a, a single metal that's by itself, and here's a compound. Uh, in this case, B is going to be a metal, and X is going to be the non-metal. And so, A can only, which is a metal, can only replace other metals. So, here is where the replacement happened. Uh, again, A, which is a metal, can only replace other metals. So they kind of just switch, and we get this new compound. So here's an example of this. We have silver plus sodium chloride makes uh, sodium, and then silver chloride. So uh, a nice, easy example uh, where we can see, again, here's our metals, and essentially what happens is those two metals switch. Now you can have the exact same thing, a single replacement reaction, but the single replacement of a non-metal. So I have the exact same reaction here, but this time I have A is going to be a non-metal. So A is going to be a non-metal uh, a non-metal com uh, compound in this case. So we have A is a non-metal, and X is also a non-metal. So again, A can now only replace X because it is a non-metal, and so they kind of switch, and then we get this BA right here. So here's our real life example, and this should be like a negative up there. We have OH, and we have MgCl. Since this is a negative uh, ion, or an anion, uh, it can only replace something else that's negative which is going to be the Cl. So these two are going to switch, and we see that it now turns into uh, MgOH. And this should actually be an MgOH2. Okay? And, yeah. So uh, we have a non-metal replacing another non-metal right there. So you have two different types of single replacements. Now, you can also have a double replacement compound where uh, an ionic compound reacts with another ionic compound and the metals just simply switch. Or you can think of it as the non-metal switch. So, what you can think of it is just A and X are just going to simply switch places. 
So A will now be partnered up with Y, and X will now be partnered up with uh, B. So right here I have A is now partnered up with Y, and X is now partnered up with B. And we see this example right here, where we're just going to take A, uh, or AG, sorry, and NA, and they're just going to simply switch. Now AG is going to be partnered up with CL, which it is, and NA is going to be partnered up with NO3, which it is. Okay, so you can just think of it as the metal switch in a double replacement reaction. Now, a neutralization reaction is exactly like a double replacement reaction. However, the only difference is, is that a neutralization reaction occurs between an acid and a base. Now, an acid is going to be starting with an H, or it's going to have a, what we have like a, a free hydrogen that it could be reacting, and, and this is what an acid is. And in this case, a base is going to be OH minuses. These are what we call our strong bases. Um, but our bases are going to be making this OH minus kind of thing. So whenever you see this OH minus, um, you can think of it as being a base. So I have a small mistake here. This should be a an O and an H, just like that. So uh, normally an acid and a base is going to be producing a salt and water. So here we have an acid, HCl, okay, plus our base, NaOH. Okay, again, our acid produces that H, and our base has that OH. And it's going to produce a salt, NaCl, and water, H2O. So hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide is going to be producing sodium chloride and water. Now, whenever I tell students that uh, in a neutralization reaction, an acid and a base is going to be making salt and water, they think that this is the only neutralization reaction out here because many people believe that salt is just NaCl uh, because of the of kitchen. This is the kind of table salt that we that we consume. But um, in chemistry, a salt essentially kind of means anything that is an ionic compound is kind of like a salt. So here I have another example of nitric acid. Okay, again, it has that H, so we know it's an acid. And we, we have KOH, or potassium hydroxide, and it has that OH, so we know it's a base. And it's going to be producing potassium nitrate and water. Now this potassium nitrate, this is also going to be our salt. Okay. Now I'm going to give you one more example of a neutralization reaction and this is going to be uh, H2SO4 plus, and let's say, uh, we'll take the first one up there, NaOH, and it's going to be producing our salt, Na2SO4, plus our water. Now something we might realize is that, okay, this is an acid, but unlike these acids, which only have one H, this one has two H's. And, and it's also not quite balanced. There's one Na over here and there's two Na's over here. So in order to balance it, I'm going to go go ahead and balance this up very quickly. Um, but we have H2, SO4, and it's going to be making two NaOHs, um, or combining with two NaOHs, and producing sodium sulfate and two waters. So just make sure it's balanced. I have two Na's over here, and I have two Na's over here. Okay, check. I have an SO4 on this side, SO4 on this side. I have one, two, three, four hydrogens on this side, and I have four hydrogens, and two oxygens, two oxygens. Everything's good. Okay? So, um, this is also a neutralization reaction, um, and it's just a, a different type of acid that has 
uh, two hydrogens. So sometimes they take a, a little bit of balancing, right, like that. But this is also a neutralization reaction. Now, our final one is a combustion reaction. And a combustion reaction is when you have a hydrocarbon plus some oxygen gas. Uh, and it's going to be producing water and carbon dioxide. So here is our hydrocarbon, C5H12, okay, plus our oxygen, and it's going to be producing CO2, carbon dioxide, and water. So this is a very kind of classical case of a combustion reaction. Now we can also have combustion reactions where our hydrocarbon contains an oxygen like this. If it contains oxygen like this, it's a little bit more trickier to balance sometimes, but um, it's still going to be producing uh, CO2 and water. Now sometimes our combustion reaction can contain uh, sulfur or nitrogen. Uh, so here's one that contains sulfur. And we have sulfur inside of the hydrocarbon and it'll still be producing carbon dioxide and water, but it'll also have this other thing, okay, this sulfur dioxide um, that'll also be produced. And this is how often you sometimes get uh, uh, acid rain. This SO2 can, will, if you burn this like in an industry or in a factory, this SO2 will get in the atmosphere and it can produce like sulfurous acid, um, up in the atmosphere and it'll rain. And th this is one of the causes for acid rain. So let's try to do a few of these examples and see if we can figure some of these things out. So if you wanted to, you could put the video on pause and see if you can try to figure out what kind of reactions uh, is occurring right here. And uh, and then you can kind of uh, put the video back on and see how you did. So anyways, the first reaction, we have our hydrocarbon plus our oxygen. So this is the one we just finished doing, and this is a combustion, a combustion reaction, OK? Again, two things making one thing. This is our synthesis reaction. Now this one's a little bit tricky. We have magnesium plus water. And what's going to happen is this hydrogen is kind of acting like uh, one of these hydrogens is kind of acting like a metal, and the magnesium is replacing it. Okay, so this is going to be a single replacement reaction. In this one right here, we have a metal, nonmetal, metal, nonmetal. And what we see is the PB and the K switch. Now PB is paired up with I and K is paired up with NO3. So this is going to be our double replacement reaction. We have um, an H and an NA. These things are going to switch. And it's going to be NA is going to combine with the BR now. And the H is going to combine with the OH and make H2O. So this is a double replacement reaction. However, this is also an acid. And this is the OH. And this is something that we should start to try and recognize, is the OH. This is going to be the base. And since it's an acid and base, and it's a double replacement, it's a neutralization reaction. OK? Um, here we have Fe is going to be replacing Na. So right now Na is combined with Br. And now over on this side, Fe is combined with Br. And Na is kind of kicked out. So this is going to be a single replacement reaction. One thing here, breaking down into two different things. That is going to be the opposite of synthesis. It's going to be decomposition. Okay. And two things combining together to make one thing. Okay, that's going to be our synthesis reaction. Okay.